and it is enjoying the apricity of the morning in the same way that we are. There is no bird that enjoys apricity more than a hornbill. Always you will find them on the trees soaking up the first rays of the sun. There it is next to us, Brian. It's over there. It's eating amongst the... <laughs> Sorry about that. It is eating amongst the buffalo dung. We're picking out termites largely, I think. Termites love the buffalo dung and the elephant dung at this time of the year especially. And uh, the hornbills in turn love the termites. As I was saying the other day, despite the fact that it is clearly very dry and there's seemingly not a great deal of life around, you wonder what on earth these uh, birds are eating. Well, clearly there's enough, because the birds don't look so skinny, they look to be doing just fine. So clearly there is plenty of invertebrate life for them to be eating, and I suspect it's largely made up of termites at this time of the year. And I know that the artfark, for example, an ant bear, although they're known for eating termites, they eat ants quite a lot during the summertime, but in the winter they tend to move on to the termites. And as we know... Termites make up, uh, just listen carefully to what I'm going to say here, the termite species living under the ground are a greater biomass than the above ground herbivores. That means that all the elephants, all of the nine species of antelope that we have here, the warthogs, the rhino, the hippopotamus, and everything else you can think of that eats a piece of grass or a piece of leaf, make up less mass than the mass of the termites living under the ground. And so there are a truly astonishing number of those termites under the ground, and that is what is sustaining these red-billed hornbills, yellow-billed hornbills, quite probably quite a few of the barbets, um, the rollers, and all the other insect-eating birds that have to overwinter here. There's a wind blowing from the southeast and a 